Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. I'm still Ooh. hello. <laughs> Cody's somewhere far, far away. <laughs> Welcome to Limitless. My name's Tricia. I'm Cody. This is Cody. We're sure. so glad to have you here this morning. And um, really, that song is why we're here. It's, this is what it's all about, is, is hailing Jesus, worshiping him, connecting to him. And I just want to encourage you this morning, whatever you came in with, he can handle. Good, bad, ugly, all of it. And so I just want to encourage you just to open yourself up to him this morning. Um, and we're just excited that you're here. Yeah, welcome. Um, if you would like to connect with us, you have cards in the back of your seat, if you have a seat in front of you. Sorry, front row, you don't have anything. Um, you can fill out that card or you can text connect to that number, 805-793-0222. Um, and everything that you need to know is right there on that QR code. Awesome. And then today um, we have Tim and Tiffany starting a grief recovery alumni group. So how many of you guys have gone through grief recovery in this church? And I always love how everybody, when we bring up grief recovery, there's always somebody going like, woohoo, which seems so out of place for grief recovery, but it really is, um, it's, a, it's a course, a program that really helps people so much coming into freedom so that we can actually move through the process of grief rather than getting stuck in it. And so um, that's why we always have excitement surrounding it is because people have found freedom. And so um, if you have been part of grief recovery before, then we encourage you actually to come to this four-week alumni group. And Tim and Tiffany are going to guide you through um, graphing another relationship and processing and um, coming to completion with another grief story in your life. Um, so you can just grab hold of them or you can sign up online by just going to that QR code. If you have not been through grief recovery, go on our website because we have an actual like beginner's grief recovery coming up in uh, a month. So check that out too. And then on Sunday, uh, the March, I almost said February, but we are in March now. I don't know how that happens. Um, Sunday, March 17th, we have a couple things going on. So I'm going to really quickly tell you about the youth potluck, which is at 4 p.m. Sign up if you've got um, any youth junior high and high school age, um, we'd encourage you to, to come and they get to connect. Um, and you can sign up on our website or on our QR code bio sites as well. And then I want to welcome up Cheryl Heink. Um, she's gonna tell you about the crop walk that is happening that day too. <laughs> Cheryl's been part of our congregation for, I don't know, 20 years or something? Almost 30, I'm sorry, I'm like, chopping 10 years off of that. So welcome, Cheryl. Yes, 30 years ago, and I think Tertia was in diapers by the time I came in. <laughs> anyway, yes, I am Sheriff Cheryl of the, uh, I'm a recruiter for the Crop Hunger Walk coming up, and I've uh, been here forever. Uh, times are changing. When I look at the faces around this church here, times are changing, and the church is changing, and it's a good thing. It is a very good thing, indeed. But I'm here to look around at you young whippersnappers who, <laughs> who probably have never even heard of the Crop Hunger Walk. So we're here to fill you in on that. Okay, we, because we need you to walk, we need your donations, we need you to support the cause. Okay, my old-fashioned quick PowerPoint is coming up here. And my helper is our friend and walker, Linda Hickman. <laughs> And I asked her not to speak because, you know, she's prone to tears when she talks about something near and dear to her heart. So there is no crying in crop walk, Linda. No crying in crop walk. Okay. All right. Uh, first slide, please. Okay. Uh, and notice the artwork on it. It's just awesome. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, what is it about? Hundreds of nationwide crop walks happen throughout our, our nation, and the funds are raised and used for Church World Service, which works globally to eliminate hunger and gives assistance for sustainable living. All right, slide number two, please. Thank you. All right, when is this happening? Well, it's the 46th annual Canal Valley Crop Hunger Walk is Sunday, on March 17th, oh, I heard there's a potluck, so you can walk and then come to the potluck and, and get filled up, that's good, okay. Uh, St. Patrick's Day, the registration is free, it starts at noon, and the walk begins at one o'clock. All right, next slide, my dear. 
All right, slide three. Where is it happening? It's a four-mile community walk, and it begins and ends at CLU by the football stadium. And there's also a 20-minute campus stroll for the lazy people, <laughs> or the compromised, or those that have time constraints. We aim to please you all, so just come on out. All right, slide four, please. Okay, results. Last year, the total was about 200 walkers, and we just came slightly uh, amiss at $30,000. So that was awesome. Yeehaw! All right. And Limitless played a big part in that. We had 10 walkers, and we raised $3,146. Woohoo! So we have a reputation to keep up. All right, slide five. All right, slide five, home help. 25% of what we raise on our local walk comes back to support four local uh, uh, food or hunger agencies, excuse me. Harbor House is one, MANA Food Bank, uh, Harvest Food Bank, and Meals on Wheels program. So it's a trifecta, folks, it's a trifecta, all right? It's good walk for your body, it's good for the world, and it's good for our community. How can you resist? I don't know. I don't know. So join Limitless. We're online. We have a team. Uh, see me, Sheriff Cheryl, and sob sister Linda here. <laughs> Outside church on the patio. We have all the answers and all the enthusiasm for the Crop Hunger Walk. All right. <laughs> Tulikaba kwa wakati ngine tukasaidiwa na watu ya family system na na wali ya service ambayo ili tusaidia kuingia hiyo kukimbia sisi maji tukapata maji na tukafurai na tukakawa sasa na nguvu tuka oshe nguwe yetu kwa kwa njia mema na tukakawa sasa na na mwili mzuri lo primero es un agradecimiento y lo otro es pedirle que sigan apoyando este tipo de iniciativas porque mucha gente lo necesita. Thank you very much for Crop Hunger World Rice Money for Timor Zero Hunger. Y kazi yote ambayo tumefanya hapa tumefanya na kusaidiwa na kikundi cha CWS ndio wametushikilia na wametufanya mambo mazuri kwa sababu ndio wametusaidia kupanda na kutufa, kutupa maarifa asante I love that. Thank you so much, Linda and Cheryl. And Linda, I love when you cry. It's okay. <laughs> it just shows your, your amazing heart. But thank you both so much. We've got newspaper articles on our history board of Cheryl from the 80s um, when she first started it with the Crop Walk. So it's an amazing, amazing organization. And as you can see, just does a lot of amazing work throughout the world. Limitless has really felt a call from God to um, do whatever he puts in front of us to help those in you know, our local community, and then reaching out to the other sides of the world. And I was just reminded in Matthew 25, 
It talks about the judgment when Jesus comes and he separates those who are his from those who have chosen not to be. Um, and he separates the sheep from the goats. And he says this, the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inter- inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And watch this, this is how he defines them. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you look after me. And I was in prison and you came to visit me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did I see you hungry or fe- and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or need in clothing and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? And the king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. So I just want to encourage you as you get involved in the crop walk um, and as you step out in any way that God calls you to be a blessing and love and give to those who um, are in need, you're actually doing it for Jesus himself. And he sees every penny that is given, every hug that is given, um, everything that you do for those in need around you. And with that, just want to say thank you so much to everybody who um, supported the love event on Friday night. It was a huge success. Yes. We're still counting and and people are still turning in donations, but so far we're up to 118,000. So just really excited and blessed. Yeah, come on. And that reminds me, I think my favorite part of the whole night, there were so many amazing parts, but my favorite part is we had uh, four young boys and some others um, who just quietly by themselves, didn't make a big fuss, came and handed me, ooh, I'm going to cry, <laughs> came and handed me donations that, from their own money, from their birthday money, um, from their bank accounts that they've been saving. And so really God is touching the hearts of everybody um, to bless the people that he loves, the kids that he loves so much. Amazing. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Speaking of these kids, we had a little mini revival breakout at school last week. It was crazy. Chapel went over. Kids were all at the front crying on their knees. It was amazing. So there's God's doing something amazing here. Um, I'm just going to fly through our weekly things. Uh, first is Next Gen. Um, Next Gen Nights, it's, it's at 5.30 p.m., um, young adults at 7 p.m. And like I said, if you want any more information, you just scan that QR code. Um, She's Limitless Book Club, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. East Squared, we're in the middle of a worship series right now. East Squared is Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. I believe this Wednesday will be a dinner because it's the first one of the month. So there's that. Um, Limitless Courage, Thursdays at 7 p.m. We meet down on the farm with a fire pit. It's awesome. Um, It is cigar friendly. So just if you guys who want to bring cigars. Uh, We have Limitless, Limitless Recovery. Fridays at 6 p.m. over in the youth hall, which is growing like crazy, which is so amazing. So, yeah. Um, And giving. Okay. I'm going to go into giving. If you want to partner with what we're doing here, um, there should be something on the screen here in a moment. Um, There's also boxes in the back and boxes in the back. That's where they are. (laughs) Or you could text that, um, text the amount you want to get to that number, um, or give online at limitlesschurchca.com slash give. And also at the beginning of worship, we'll have somebody um, come and hand around baskets so those can receive your offerings. Or also if you have prayer cards or connect cards that you filled out, um, please put those in the basket as well and just know that we do pray for those. We're going to invite you forward now um, to receive communion. So if you want to come up and receive a cracker and juice and um, we're going to take communion together. Um, If you have been around for a few years, you'll know that we've kind of gone through phases with communion where we've had it at the side, we've done it together once a month, and we've really felt, Cody especially, but all of us as leadership have really felt that God's hand is on really reviving communion in the hearts of his people. Um, It is something that's so powerful that Jesus invites us to do in remembrance of him and also to partake in what he did for us. And so we get to do that together.
Cody just mentioned that the other day at um, our, the school that we have here at Limitless Academy, uh, we have chapel every day for about 20 minutes before lunch. And um, Zach had to come in to, to do something, like to grab something, I don't know. And he runs back out and he's like, look at this. And he shows us a video of the kids just on their faces. And so we all ran in here. Um, to join with the rest of the faculty and staff. And really it all started because uh, Regina, one of one of the leaders of Limitless Academy, stood up and she just really felt um, really what Caleb had been speaking about on Wednesday night. Um, he was talking about how worship, part of our worship is being able to really express our emotions to God and that so many people try to discount that, but actually God has given us those things to be able to express and, and bring to his feet. And so Regina had just encouraged our students to bring any hurts, any pains, but also any mess ups, any areas in their lives that they felt like they had messed up and felt maybe guilt or condemnation. And these kids just did. They just broke before the Lord and they voluntarily stayed into lunch for like 30 minutes over or something like that. And I want to encourage you this morning to do the same. As you take this communion, as you remember what Jesus did, you also get to step into it right now with him. That his body was broken for you and his blood was poured out for you so that you do not need to live with guilt or condemnation, that you can actually live in true freedom with him. And so I want to encourage you this morning, lay it all before him, whether you have feelings of grief or pain, whether you have any guilt, right now is the opportunity to make the great exchange with him. And if you don't have any of that, then lay, lay out your gratitude before him and enter his courts with your gratitude and with your thanksgiving. And so Jesus, we thank you right now for your body broken for us. Jesus, we thank you for your blood that was poured out to cover anything, God, that is not in alignment with you. Jesus, we thank you for the blood of the covenant, the new covenant of love. thing about the church is this is not a spectator event, right? This is where we gather on a Sunday as the body of Christ and we praise Jesus together because he's worthy, right? Is he worthy? He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. So we're right now we're going to stand and we're going to praise God. We're going to praise him for who he is. We're going to praise him for what he's done. So this is going to require some participation, okay? You guys ready? All right. I'm going to say... Let everything, Let everything that, has breath, that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Oh 
cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater. Come on. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's no. Oh, where am I? <laughs> You're so good. <laughs> praise cause there's nobody great. Come on, let's go. Oh, praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Oh, praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. So I'll praise the Lord, oh my soul. you. <laughs> you are so worthy. You are so worthy of all our praise, God. You're the only one who is worthy. Thank you, Jesus.
Oh 
With all of heaven, we are singing. With all of heaven, we are singing. With all of heaven, we are singing. Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy. To the one who wore a crown of thorns, to the one who took the lash and scorch for the hands and feet that were pierced by nails for the sad.
for transformation this morning that we would walk we wouldn't walk out here this out of this room the same god but being in your presence we can't help but change we can't help but shift thank you jesus You are so good. You're so worthy. This morning we have a great honor and privilege um, to invite, I'm probably going to mess up the pronunciation of your last name, Ludwig Skimper, up here. Um, he is come all the way from South Africa. Um, he grew up in Zimbabwe. Um, his mom actually started Lorenzo, which is the third children's village that we started to support. And um, so we've known Ludwig for quite a long time. And um, it's been just an honor to watch what God has done in and through your life. Uh, many, some of you who have been around for a while uh, may have remembered that we started to support Ludwig. When he was in his like early 20s, he started planting churches in Zimbabwe. And the last count I got was he had planted eight churches. Um, yeah. So he is the real deal, like Cody spoke about um, on Friday night. He's the real deal. He's an incredible man, an incredible, powerful man of God. Um, he's now pastoring a church in uh, right on the border of South Africa and Zimbabwe. And then he's also um, just taken over um, multi-ministry. So I'm not sure if you're going to share about that today. But it's an incredible ministry all over Africa. Um, so please... Open your hearts to what God might want to share through him today, and um, please welcome Ludwig. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for that introduction. Wow. Um, I couldn't have had a better introduction. And just morning to everyone. Good morning. What a privilege and an honor to be here this morning. Um, I'm humbled and... You know, I'm that, that cousin that is from the distance watching always, the one that's on the fringes. And it's been an honor and a privilege just to, to be part of the family here through the many years, um, as um, Tosha was saying, since in my 20s when I was just, you know, recklessly in love with God and just going out to do the things of God, being broke and very poor, but just having passion. And that was all that was needed in those days. And it's all that's needed today. Always. It's just a passion. You don't need to have all the fancy stuff. You just need to have a passion for God. And that's what you run on. That's the fuel you run on. Amen. All right. And so just allow me here. I am also going to be um, recording this for my home church. As Tisha was saying that um, I am also the pastor of Messina Community Church. And that is the church on the border between South Africa and Zimbabwe. This is a, a quite a is the biggest or the busiest port town in Africa. And um, if you can just bring it into perspective, a thousand trucks, big trucks, pass the border every day. It is big. It is the gateway to the rest of Africa. So we are. Um, it's a small town, but it's quite an interesting town. And we are, I'm privileged to be a pastor of a multicultural church there called Messina Community Church. And uh, our theme is to be a city of refuge amidst all the chaos and all the brokenness in the world. We are to be the place where people can become whole and discover God. And so I just want to honor the Messina Community Church leadership for allowing me to come here today and to continue with what God has called me to do. And that is to raise up churches, to raise up leaders. That brings me to what Tersha was referring to, that I'm taking, stepping in actually this month as the director for multi-ministries, where I get to work together with a huge network of churches, where our vision is to revive, empower, and connect young leaders, the church leaders of tomorrow. Um, we need the senior pastors because we can't make it without them. We need the mentorship. We need the advice. We need the, the prayers. But so we are a network um, of these groups of churches that have decided that we need to build bridges. We need to, um, we need to work together because the days that we're living in is the days of the Lord when the revival is happening. We believe that revival is taking place. And we believe the Lord is at work. And we can no longer hang on the stories of former glory. We no longer can hold on to the stories of what happened a long time ago. May they inspire us. May they lead us. But may we chart our own revivals to the Spirit of God. And this is what we believe in. Amen. And of course, uh, before I just get started in my preaching... I just want to honor and say I cannot do this without the support of my family. I am also a husband to an amazing wife, Leah, that is holding the fort back home. And um, it's not easy. And I honor her for supporting the work of God. And for all those that are involved in ministry, you know, um, it is the ones in the background that work the hardest. It's the ones that um, support from the back. And so I honor the sacrifice that she's doing, looking after the two small kids that we have, five-month-old baby girl, Alina, and a five-year-old son is five on Wednesday. And um, I know that we are, this is the biggest sacrifice that you do in ministries when you're away from those that you love the most. But I honor them for just so sending me. And so here I am today, and I'm so blessed to be part of this family and look forward to just continue on this journey to see what the Lord is doing in the world. Amen. It was such a blessing to see Pastor Dave this morning. Wow. I just remember back on our previous visits. And it's so amazing to see the church growing and transforming on this journey of life. And I just want to honor Tush and Cody with the amazing work that you guys are doing um, with all the reports. <laughs> now, I'm allowed to say this because um, I don't work here. Please pray for them. 
please support them. It's really tough. It's really difficult in ministry. Um, you'll never know the sacrifice that a family has to take, and it's the whole family. You'll never know the burden that they carry. And so please pray for them. Please support them. Um, just send them some appreciation. Send them some love because what they're doing is amazing. The eternal consequences of what's happening here, I pray. Please pray for them. Amen. And so this morning, just as I just get to the sermon, we can go with our Bibles to the book of First Kings. We can go with our Bibles to the book of First Kings. First Kings chapter 17 is where we're going to start off for today. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 17. This is the portion that we're going to read. We have two portions today, but this is the main story that we're going to read from today. And so today, as I go through these things, may we realize that our God is limitless in what He can do. May we realize that our God is limitless in who He is. May we realize that our God Boxes that we put in God do not define the true God that we worship. May we realize that the boundaries that we place are our own boundaries and not His boundaries. May we realize that the God we worship is so much more bigger than we could ever realize. This is our God who is limitless, who is beyond perception, who is the creator of the universe. Just think this for a moment. Everything that we see around us that we're still discovering as we go deeper down into the molecular level or further out into the astronomical level, our God is even more. And this is the God that we worship. Amen? All right. So before I get into the more spiritual stuff, I just have to relate a story from my upbringing so that you can just in some way see where I come from. And so I grew up on a farm in Zimbabwe. Um, just north of South Africa, if you go on the map. Some of you might know about it, and some of you might not know about it. So just go on the African map, the continent, you'll see there's South Africa at the right at the bottom, and then just north of it is Zimbabwe. And I grew up on this farm in Zimbabwe. It was a cattle ranch on the Munezi River. And it was quite dry area, um, maybe not as dry as um, California, but um, maybe just as hot, I don't know. Um, I, 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 only, I see that it can get pretty hot here. Does it get hot in California? Like really, really hot? All right. So I, 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 don't, I don't know, but I'll take your word for it. And so this place can get really hot. And we grew, I grew up on this farm. I remember there's this one story I'd like to relate to you. Just so you could create the picture. We're on the banks of the very big Monezi River. And it's a very big river. And um, it's very dry. So along the river, it's very green, but the rest of it's pretty dry. And there's these hills. And we as kids, I grew up, did homeschooling there, ACE system, Christian school system, homeschooling there on the farm. And my cousin was visiting. And we decided, wow, we need a break. We want to go and visit the neighbors. <laughs> now, when you're talking about um, uh, f farms that are 44,000 acres, the neighbors are pretty far away and I, we were about nine years old I remember me and my cousin and we decided we're going to hit the road the, at least the house wasn't that far away it was just behind the hill we had to go down the river over the hill and behind the hill was the farmhouse we wanted to go and visit them there was um, two kids there um, almost our age and we wanted to go and visit them we didn't tell anyone this was our own idea and we're nine years old and we hit the road and this is in the morning on a very hot summer's day, like blazes hot, it's really hot. No water, no shoes, no hats, no sunblock. Who needs those things? And we hit the road or the river. And we walk down the river and we sit up with high spreads and we're excited and we're going along and it's really good. And, you know, just we're playing and we don't think what we're doing, we just, just want to do this. So we're going along the road, the river, and we get to the foot of the mountain. Now suddenly this hill is looking much bigger than we thought or remembered it being. And so we, we, we started, all right, all right, we can't go back. I mean, we, it feels like we're halfway. It would be bad for us to go back. We're almost there. We just, just go a little bit longer. And so we start going up this hill. It's extremely hot. Now it's towards midday and the rocks are getting hot. We have no shoes. 
And uh, this is, again, this is not in summer when there's a bit of leaves. This is the beginning, the, uh, the beginning of summer when the leaves have all dropped and they still start to come out. So there's no shade. And we start going out up and up and up and up. And it's getting hot and hot. And we're forging ahead and we start to, no, there's no more laughter. There's no more excitement. We're now starting to squabble. We're starting to blame whose idea was this really now together? Is this really worth it? Have you felt this when you start off with an adventure and you start off with something and think like, whose idea was this really? Seriously, now it's really starting to get tough and hot and I, I don't know. But I, it's, it's too embarrassing to turn back. I don't want to admit defeat just yet. So we forge ahead and we go over the top and we start going down. And I remember at this stage we're going from shade bush to shade bush and um, the, the heat was a motivation for us to go faster. And at one stage my cousin said, that's it. I'm just going to lie under this bush here, and I'm going to give up, and uh, this is it. And I told him, well, I'm not going to carry you. You can just stay there. I'm going to go ahead. And he said, if you don't carry me, the wild animals will get me. Now, this was not an extreme exaggeration because um, this is the African bush where we did have wild animals. And so I said, at this stage, I don't care. I just want to get to the other house. We can almost see it. And so at one stage, we were now fighting each other, and we were now so angry, and we eventually we made it, wow. just in time to catch them as they were coming to come and visit us. <laughs> <laughs> and we jump on the back of the truck, with the, the, we call it the buckies in, in Africa, the pickup trucks, and we have a ride all the way back, <laughs> not knowing that they were actually coming to us. And so this morning, when we talk about a journey, we each in every one of us on a journey. We each have a place that we seem to be going to. And sometimes it's the wrong place. And sometimes it's misplaced. And sometimes you wonder, where the heck am I going? But you're on this journey. Now it's difficult to know each person's journey because they're on their own journey. The person next to you is on their own journey. And sometimes we can judge people on the way they're going on the journey. But we don't know where they're coming from. You don't know where they're going. You don't know what they've experienced. You don't know their journey. So just look, just look to someone next to you and say, you're on your journey. So let's read 1 Kings chapter 17, 8 to 17. Then when the word of the Lord came to him, <clears throat> this is now Elijah, arise, go to Zarephath. Now, interesting, Zarephath is um, next to the main city where the worship of Baal is from. So this was a godless place, a place that, of darkness, a place of idol worship and child sacrifice. This is the last place that you would think that the Lord is sending the man of God. This is also the last place that you would think that God is noticing who is there. Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Don't just pass by. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. And so, it is just step back for a moment. There's a big drought that's taking place. Um, Elijah has challenged the gods of Baal and said there will be a drought until the people of God worship the Lord God of Israel. And so, now... He is being sent to be to the very place of the people that he challenged and ashamed and said, I'll provide for you there. There is someone waiting for you there. And so sometimes in the midst of chaos, God sends us to the places we least expected. And the situations that we feel, God, you're not in control. Lord, where are you? God sends him. So he goes to a widow. Just imagine today, single moms really have a tough time. Single moms have to raise the kids. Single moms have to face the bulls. Single moms, in my own church, I know of a number of single moms. And it's really difficult. I mean, she's raising kids, the two of us, is hard enough. It feels impossible. I can't imagine being a single mom. No one to have your back. No moment of rest. No one to encourage you. So he's going to... This single mom, this widow, who has lost it all, whose husband has passed away, she has gone through grief. 
And we don't know if the husband left in those days. Um, it might not have been there so easy, so it may be passed away through some disease or war or fighting. We don't know. And this might have been even fighting against the people of God because he's going to this foreign place. It might have been killed by a person or a soldier belonging to the people of Elijah. So in some ways, Elijah might have been the enemy. We don't know. He's going to this lady that has lost it all, who is in the middle of the big drought, who is in the middle of a terrible space, who is worshipping this fallen father, this God, who this people, and she is lost. So just setting the stage here. So he rose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I might drink. So this is just hospitality. Um, he's show, she's showing hospitality. He's expecting hospitality, um, which, is, which is a lot saying because she's a stranger. But in that culture, it was hospitable to be give, give water. And water was the most precious commodity. So she's just being um, hospitable, which is very big in their culture. And as she was going to bring it, the water, he called her and said, Bring me a morsel, a small piece of bread in your hand. So not just water, just bring me some food. And she said, As the Lord your God lives. So notice here, not the Lord my God, the Lord your God. The Lord your God. We'll come back to that. I have nothing Baked and only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. Now, this is maybe not your standard kitchen ingredients so much in your kitchen, but this was the basis of um, making bread and um, the, the food stuff. So, this is the basic ingredients that every kitchen in the Middle East in those days had, and she did only have a small amount. And she says, I have nothing, not even a small amount. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. That we may eat it and die. This is very dramatic. She's saying this to a complete stranger. She's be completely honest. She's beyond the point of being polite and when asking, are you okay? Yes, it's all good. It's all fine. You know that thing when we say, when someone asks, how's it going? And we say, it's okay. Because we just don't want them to see that the world is falling apart. We don't have the strength to explain all the craziness in our lives. So we say, it's fine, it's all good, no, no problems, no worries. But she has gone beyond the point of looking nice and being polite and said, we're going to eat this and we're going to die. This is the very last stuff. We are about to go bankrupt. We are about to lose everything. We are about to go into the worst place we are there. We have lost it all. We have no one to provide for us. We have no husband to protect us, which was the case in the, that culture in that time. We are alone. There is no one out there. Our gods have forsaken us. Just let us die, please. And this is what she was saying. To hear the cry of this single mom, this lady. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Wow, this is the first thing he says. After this lady just said, we're, just, we're going to end our lives, which is finished. Like, don't worry. I don't know if you'd like it when someone says, don't worry, man. Everything will be all right. This is what he says. Just imagine, in our, in our, this is our, in our culture, what you'd be saying. Don't worry. Go and do as you've said. Meaning, uh, make the food, the meal. Um, but first make a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. Wow. Isn't he selfish? She doesn't have any food. <laughs> now she has to make first food for this stranger when she doesn't have enough for her and her son. And so we'll come back to that in a moment. How can he be so selfish? And so, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar, jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty. Until the day of the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she said, and she and he and her, and her, sorry, and she and he and her household ate for many days. And the jar of flour was not spent. And neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Amen. We honor the word of God and the reading this morning. 
as we look back on this story. And now um, we are coming from different backgrounds and different journeys. Like I said before, we are each one on this journey. We're each one walking on this journey. And as a pastor, as uh, those in ministry might know, we get a small glimpse into the brokenness and into the burdens that we are all carrying, the journeys that we're all fighting. And it's heavy. But let's, let's see that the Lord saw this lady, this widow, this lady. He knew that out of all Israel, my eye is upon this lady. This lady who does not believe in me. This lady that has gone through the worst days of her life. This lady that has rejected me. I'm not her God. But I see this single mom. I see her. And so God sees you. God sees you in the journey you're at. God knows you where you are coming from. God knows the details more than anyone else. And maybe you are that, that widow of Zarephath. You are gathering the sticks. You are gathering the last amount of energy. You are about to give up. You are saying like this lady, I'm going to eat this and die. Maybe in your personal life, maybe in your marriage, maybe in your business, maybe just wherever you're at. And so often people don't know, they don't realize, they can't understand. When you're gathering the sticks, it's the last energy. They don't know that when you're going to the shopping center, we are going to work, and you're trying to smile, and you're trying to keep it all together. They don't know that at home the jar is empty, and the jug is running dry. They don't know that you're trying by all means to keep it together. But the Lord sees you this morning. The Lord sees where you're at. The Lord sees the brokenness and He sends Elijah. He sends His Spirit to go out and touch this lady's life. But there is a key that we need to realize here. That in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of trying to give up, in the midst of giving up all, God asks her, give up that what you have. The key is, he says, give me that last bit that you have. Give me that last bit of energy that you have. Does it make sense? But when you step back and see that the Lord is saying, surrender that which you have to gain more than you could ever Im imagine. She did not imagine that it will be true that when she gives up this little bit of flour and this little bit of oil, this little bit of life that she has left, the scraps, this brokenness, these pieces, that when she surrendered this to the man of God, when she surrendered this to God, that God is going to give so much back, more than she can ever realize or ever imagine, God gives it back. And so this is the principle that's time and time again in the Word of God. Give up to get so much more than you could ever imagine. You know, Jimmy, uh, Jim Elliot, the missionary to Ecuador, had this profound statement that he made. He is no fool, or she, who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Amen. And so today I challenge you. I know that it's hard. I know no one understands you. I know that you're trying to keep it together. But God is challenging somebody today. Give up what you cannot keep. Don't try and hold it together. Don't try and do it in your own strength. Don't try and figure it out. I mean, she must have gone through all the budgets. And she must try and have gone to all the agencies to, to look for jobs, uh, to try and figure it out. She must have had all the plans. Uh, and their family must have tried to come together and try to figure it out. But it all failed. And she said, this is it. I'm just going to give up. And maybe you're giving up today. You're just saying, wow, you know, I'm just going to give up. Uh, you know, I have, I'm tired of looking Christian. I'm trying, tired of pretending like everything is all together. I don't even know if I like this God anymore because I've done it all. I've gone to church and I've done everything right, but my life is falling apart and everything is done. But God is saying, give up, surrender. Give up the bit of flower. Give up the bit of life that you're holding on to. Give up the semblance that you're trying to pretend that everything is okay because it's not. 
And so she gives up and gains so much more. And today, when we, let's go to our second portion of reading. And I'm almost done because I, today I'm not going to preach so much, but this morning I was so excited as the Spirit of God was putting, and this doesn't happen that often, I must say, that um, the Spirit of God is putting an excitement for what He's going to do in someone's life today. We're going to pray with people here at the front today and believe that the oil will be multiplied. As you surrender, God steps in. As you give up, God takes over. As you kneel down, God lifts up so that you can go further than you could ever imagine. And you know, when I say these things, you might think, Ludwig, you know, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've experienced. Your life is all perfect and everything has gone according to plan. And you have not gone through the valleys that I've gone through. Let me tell you, do not judge a book by its cover. You do not know someone else's journey. You do not know through the loss of a child that we went through. You do not know through the darkness of losing everything that we went through. You do not know when everything fell apart, the darkness that overwhelms, the depression that pulls in, when you feel like you're tired of this life. You do not know. But amidst that, as we could say, Lord, sometimes we do not even like you. Can a pastor even say that? Sometimes I'm so angry at you. But Lord, I know that you love me. And so I'm surrendering everything to you. Lord, I don't understand. I just don't understand. But I know that you know so much more than me. Here I am. Here is my life. And so Jesus challenges this. Amidst the people that were rejecting him, amidst the people that hated him, he comes and says this. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Wow, he says, come. He says, come, and the invitation is to come, meaning we have to go to Jesus. He has made available the free gift of life, overflowing, but there is a step that I need to take. Come. The lady had to go and make the bread, a step that she had to do to surrender. Come. The Lord says, come. Because we have to surrender our arrogance. We have to surrender the thought that I can do this alone. We have to surrender the ability or the thought that I must go on my own journey and say, Lord, not my will, but your will. I want to walk your journey. I want to follow you because you know the way and you are the ever protector. Lord, I want to hide behind you because I'm tired of trying to do it myself. Lord, I want to follow you because I'm so lost. I just don't know where to go. Lord, I want to depend on you because I just don't, I can't do this, Lord. I'm lost. I want to follow you, Lord. So Jesus says, come. Come and follow me. Come to me, all who labor, that are working, that are trying to make a living, that are struggling to get through the day, all who are, who are, who are working so hard, all the single moms, all the people, all the people that are going through difficult times when everything is expensive or when the rent is due and everything is falling apart. Come, Jesus says. Come to me, all who are labor and are heavy laden. These burdens that we carry, that we do not even share with our spouse. These burdens that we carry, that we do not even share with our friends. The burdens that we carry, that cause us to have sleepless nights. That causes us to be robbed of our joy. We're supposed to have the joy of the Lord. But we are not so joyful. We are heavy burdened, thinking of everything going wrong in our lives and wondering, Lord, where are you? When Jesus is saying, come to me. I'm not far away. I haven't run away. I haven't pushed you away. I'm right here. Come to me. And so he says, and I will give you what you do not have, what you are seeking and desperately wanting. I'll give you rest. Haven't you desired this for a long time? Just to let go and say, wow, you know, Lord, I, I'm so tired of just trying to figure this out. To make this work. Maybe the breadwinner in the house or I don't know. 
you, you, maybe you're just as a couple trying to figure it out and just want to let go. And the Lord says, come and I'll give you rest. Let go. Let go of the reins. Just let go of this life that is spiraling out of control. Let go of this marriage that's breaking apart. Let go of this life that is descending in depression. Let go of this thing that you have no answers to. Let go. And I'll give you rest. Because you don't have to figure this out. You don't have to know the way. You don't even have to be strong enough to lift this burden. It's not yours to carry. I'll give you rest. And he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i'm gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light matthew 11 verse 28 to 30 now is something that we miss here and um you know coming from a a, a different culture and different time we might think like what jesus is saying that i'll give you rest but now he's giving me work i'll give you rest but now he's tying me to something what is this yoke thing? What is this um, burden thing? I thought I'm going to have, I'm going to be free. Now I'm tied down to something. Isn't this is some of the thoughts? Just if I have to be honest, like I just don't get this. But if we see what it means, is that the young ox would be tied to the older, stronger ox, who knows the way, who pulls the brunt of the plow, and the, this ox, when I'm yoked to this one. Meaning I'm tied to this one. Meaning that one is leading the way. Meaning that one is showing me where to go. Meaning I'm depending on the stronger ox to carry the load. And that's the picture that Jesus was showing. Tie yourself to me so that I can pull the heavy load. Yoke yourself to me because I know the way. Allow me to go in front. Because I'll face the enemy when you want to hide behind me. In the heat of the sun and the worst part of the, your life, let me take the lead. Because I am that ox that will take the yoke. And so this is what Jesus is basically saying. Surrender your life to me and I will lead the way. Amen. 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 And so this morning, as I'm about to finish, I'm done here. I want to challenge you, surrender your life to the Lord Jesus. I'm not doing an altar call. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying you should, you should become a Christian. What I'm saying is to those that know the Lord and those who don't know the Lord, this morning say, Lord, I just want to surrender my life. I've sometimes been so angry at you. I've sometimes not figured it out. I'm actually going through the worst part of my life and I'm about to eat the last and die. But you know how the Lord works? It's not by chance that you're here today or that you see this online or you hear this in some Facebook page. The Lord saw the widow at Zarephath and Saint Elijah in the moment when it matters the most. And so the Lord speaks this to someone today. You can't do this without Him. We're not designed to do this alone, to be an island, to fight it all alone. And no one knows the journey that you're on. People might try and um, say they do. People might have opinions on the journey that you're on. People might say some stuff. But ultimately, they don't know the journey that you are on. And so today, I'm just going to ask the worship team to come forward. And we're going to take a step back and say, Lord, here I am. I just want to worship you today. May you, may you pull me where I cannot go by myself. May you put the pieces back together. That the enemy has broken. Lord, I am broken in so many ways. Lord, I am tired of trying to keep it together. Lord, I need you in my life. And so what we're going to do is, um, I'm just going to invite everyone forward. It's not about coming forward. But it's about saying, Lord, here I am. And even if you don't come forward today, it's amazing that the Lord is not limited to the stage. Or to church services. Thank goodness for that. Even in your own living room, your bedroom, at a mall, at a parking lot, in your car, when your life is falling apart, you say, Lord, here I am. Lord, I need you now. I'm at the last bit of strength. Lord, here I am.
So if you feel the Spirit of God moving in your life this morning, and you've been fighting so long, this is that step. This is that moment when Jesus says, come, and I'll give you rest. I know you've fought. I know you've tried. I know you've put in everything. But that last bit of flour, that last bit of oil, that last bit, surrender and say, Lord, I need you now. And so let's just all stand up in this moment. As the Spirit of God is moving in this place, and He's been speaking to you, He's calling to you. Again, I, I, I've been to the darkest place, the darkest night. Been running away, pushing away, being angry at God. Maybe you don't even consider yourself a Christian or you don't even consider yourself close to God. Or you used to be and you've just been so hurt and messed up by life. You're just so angry at God. If He even exists, God is saying, come. And I'll give you rest for your soul. There's so many voices out there. So many voices shouting about your journey. So many people speaking. Today, social media amplifies everything. But God is saying, listen to me. Come. And so I'm just going to allow you to come forward. And I'm going to ask the leadership of the church to come and help me pray for some people this morning. As we want to turn this place into the hospital of God. We want to allow God to minister to us today. To that single mom, that guy who's trying to figure it out, that guy who's struggling, just come forward. That lady, that person, just come forward. I'm going to, I'm going to allow the Spirit of God to do what I cannot do this morning. We worship you, Lord. You are so amazing, Father. Lord, we thank you that you are not limited. You are so not limited to perception or boundaries or people's opinion, Lord, but you are beyond. And you say, come. Lord, we come before you this day. We pray that your spirit may awaken within us that which has died long ago. May you revive the brokenness and put me back together again. Lord, I need you, Lord God. Lord, here we are when everything is falling apart. Lord, we just don't know how we're going to keep this marriage together. We just don't know how we're going to feed the kids. We just don't know how. I just don't know, Lord, how I can do this. Lord, if you even exist, Lord, I cry out to you this morning. Come, Lord.
take this holy moment where the Spirit of God is moving and say everything else can wait. But Lord, here I am. I seek you, Lord God. I worship you, Lord. Here I am. Where you at? Just where you at. Even if you haven't come forward, just seek the living God where you at. 